Hi guys, Dr. Gillard. I'm throwing together a real quick video to talk about palpation of the anterior thorax here, uh, which will be good for first quarter and fifth quarter CVB pathology. It'll help you guys both out a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the five cardiac areas. We're actually going to be uh, palpating my grandson here in a second, but I thought I'd start out before I run that video, let's uh, start out with just a little basic of anatomy. This is obviously a uh, skeleton here, and uh, here's how the, the deal works. We are interested in the apet monkey areas. Those are the five cardiac areas, and you need to know how to palpate them really good because by the time you get ready to auscultate, we're going to skip palpation. You just need to know where they are. So you need to palpate them a bunch of times. So we're basically going to slide off the clavicle into the what? Jugular notch. We're going to drop down two inches and find this thing. What's this bump? Sternal angle of Louis. Sternal angle of Louis uh, runs laterally into the second ribs. So the A for apet monkey is the aortic area. That's going to be right here. Okay, and that where is here? That's the second intercostal space is below the second rib. Second intercostal space, mid sternal border. Here's pulmonic area. You just go the same way. Let's go straight across, find the rib, drop down. Pulmonic cardiac area is right here. Drop down, I'm going to show you how to palpate on my grandson in a minute. Drop down another one, there's the herbs point. Herbs points, third intercostal space. Fourth intercostal space, notice it's starting to get a little narrower. Her. Nothing here. Some texts say this is actually the herbs point. Drop down one more, and that's the fifth intercostal space. Notice how tight it is. Sometimes you can't palpate it, and you just have to kind of feel the hump of the rib and kind of guess where it is. But as you start palpating out, you'll be able to start uh, to feel the fifth rib. And we're looking for that fifth intercostal space. Uh, which is right here, and it's in the mid clavicular line. If you drop a parallel line down with the ground uh, in the midpoint of the clavicle, uh, this is where the the uh, apical impulse is, which is often the the PMI as well, point of maximum impulse. Not always though. Uh, this one right here was also important. I forgot to mention that. Uh, that's the AP. Oops, that's the aortic, pulmonic, herbs point. That's the tricuspid for T, and mitral area would be out here. Okay, so I hope that gives you, uh, kind of reviews the anatomy in the area, and let's go look at the palpation. Hi guys, Dr. Gillard. Here's a quick video on how to find the apical impulse. This video will be good for first quarter students and for fifth quarter CVP pathology students. All right, so how do we find it? Clavicle is right here. You follow the clavicle down. I can also see the sternal part of the SCM muscle, sternocleomastoid muscle. It's right here. So there's a nice notch right here. You can see I can sink into it a little bit. So what is that? Jugular notch. Next, go down the manubrium about two inches. If you can find it, great. In his case, I could find a nice, what, sternal angle of Louis here. Sometimes you won't be able to feel it, so don't go any farther than the peace sign. Okay? Okay, so now we're in the second. Um, let me start again here. Sternal angle of Louis. Now let's go to the, let's say you're asked to find the second intercostal space. So I'm on the sternal angle, I just start keeping my marker finger on the, the juggler notch. I'm just going to kind of wiggle my way over and feel for that big pump of bone. And I don't know if you can see it, but I can sure feel it. That's the second rib right here. Uh, so all you do is slide down and that's the second intercostal space right there. There's the second rib, second intercostal space. Who cares about that on the left? What is that? Good, that's part of the apep monkey. That's the pulmonic uh, auscultation zone or auscultation area where the pulmonic valve is. Now, same thing over here. So, sternal angle, if I go this way, okay, there's, there's the second rib. So, right here is the what? 
that's the apep monkey or all pigs eat too much, that's the A. That's the aortic auscultation area. That's where the aortic valve can best be heard. Okay, so you might get uh, either one of those on the test for first quarter. Probably for fifth quarter, you're going to say, I'm going to say, find the apical impulse. So now let's go all the way. And for first quarter, pay attention too, because you might have to find the fifth intercostal space. So again, clavicles, okay, drop into the jugular notch. Uh, this is my marker finger again. This is my hunter finger. So I'm holding with my marker, and now I'm hunting. Let the hunter, let the dog run and hunt. And I'm hunting by, I hold the skin, I'm not sliding over the skin, I'm sliding uh, the skin over the superficial and deep fascia here, feeling for bony structures. And there it is right there, sternal angle of Louis. Okay, now I'm just going to keep sliding out, going straight laterally, and there's the second rib, plain as day there. I don't know if you can see my finger going right over it. Uh, if I slide up, I'm now in the second intercostal space. Now let's trade put my marker finger on the second rib so now I'm in the second intercostal space and this is where I would auscultate for the pulmonic valve or pulmonic area that's where the pulmonic valve is okay let's keep going let's let the hunter hunt okay now we're gonna go up a big mountain that's the third rib I'm still staying on the left sternal border okay I'm going there's the rib top now I dropped in there's the third intercostal space right there. What's that one called? That's Herb's point. Yeah, that's a good vantage point. You can hear kind of overall what's going on at the heart. You can particularly hear murmurs of the aortic and uh, regurgitations of the aortic and pulmonic valves here as well. Let's bring my marker in. Third rib. Okay, now let's let them hunt now. So I'm going up the next mountain. There's the fourth rib. Let's keep them going. Fourth intercostal space. Let's bring my marker and hold. Let's go one more. Now remember, it gets weird down here. The ribs come very close together, so we can feel just a little bit of a hump here. Fifth intercostal space is right here. I'm using these uh, marks here for the inferior part of the anterior rib cage. Costal margins, I believe they're called. Xiphoid is right here. So I'm looking to make sure you're not way down here because this is way too far should be maybe an inch and a half above the base of the xiphoid process. Okay, I can bring my marker in if I want, mark the fifth rib, and let the hunter hunt, following the rib out, following the intercostal space, staying in between it, and there I am. There's the apical impulse. I'm going to switch hands real quick so I can show you something. So I'm palpating for an apical impulse. Most of you probably only Maybe 30-40% of you will have one if you can feel one. Can't feel one here, which is good. That means the heart's not enlarged. But where is it located? Mid-clavicular line, right? So here's the clavicle. I don't know if you can see that or not. I can't see that. But you can see the mid-clavicular lines right here. The mid-clavicle drop a, a perpendicular to the ground lying down. And that's the uh, where the apical impulse should be palpable. I'll use your index finger. It might have a few more proprioceptors. Make sure you're in the intercostal space. Don't be on the rib or you won't feel anything. I'm in the intercostal space. Another way to do it is what? What's this line called? Mid-sternal line. So I can go how far? Good. Seven to nine centimeters lateral. That's also uh, the apical impulse. How big should the apical impulse be if you feel it? 2.4 centimeters or about a big, as big as a quarter. A quarter is 2.5 centimeters. So it should never be bigger than that. I should never be able to feel it in more than one intercostal space. If I can feel it in two or even three, that's a bad side. That means the left ventricle is really hypertrophied. They need to be uh, evaluated by a cardiologist ASAP. If the apical impulse is shifted uh, 10 centimeters or more, what if it's way out here? That also indicates, even if it's only one intercostal space, that also indicates left ventricular hypertrophy. So that's a bad thing. Uh, those are the questions, not of course first quarter, but those are the questions fifth quarter students are going to get right there. Okay, I think that should cover uh, finding the apical impulse. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, grandson, for uh, letting us use you. Awesome. See you next time.